Now it's looking pretty good in this crop at the moment, but by the end of this growing season, many grain growers will have been forced to apply fungicides to their cereal crops to avoid potentially significant yield losses caused by stem rust. This persistent fungus is still the world's biggest cereal disease, and while great work is being done to breed resistant lines, stem rust remains an ever-present threat. But there is a way to reduce future outbreaks, and that is to control green bridge after this season's harvest. Tony Crowley reports. A crop like this. The presence of stem rust in a crop is determined by four important factors. Seasonal weather conditions, time of sowing, the varieties grown, and green bridge. The rusts of cereals, and we're talking about stem rust in wheat, leaf rust and stripe rust also in wheat, and also leaf rust in barley. The importance of the green bridge is that these rusts cannot survive on anything other than living plant material, and their main host to live on is volunteer cereals, particularly susceptible cereals. Victorian-based Grant Holloway is chairman of the Australian Cereal Rust Control Program Consultative Committee. Hugh Woolwork from South Australia sits on the same committee. We had a situation last year where the variety kite, which everyone had thought was resistant, um, actually got a very high amount of rust on, on that kite wheat. It turns out that the farmers growing kites have been growing this variety for 35 years and over that period of time a very small component of that uh, kite wheat, um, which is actually well susceptible, seems to have multiplied um, over successive seasons. So now susceptible components have become the majority component. And so kite, which the farmer had thought in all good faith was resistant, has now become susceptible. That crop highlighted the importance of the other factors. Varietal selection, purity of the chosen variety and seasonal conditions. Early sowing rains that year resulted in a susceptible crop primed for an explosion of stem rust across that region. We found that rust built up very, very rapidly on the kite wheat um, up north of Port Perry, and from there it blew across the rest of the eastern part of the state, causing widespread um, rust in particularly yippie crops. And I guess that was the foundation for quite a lot of the rust we're now seeing in, in summer volunteers. Currently the risk to our cereal crops is the highest that it's been in you know, anything up to 40 years because of the significant summer rainfall that we've had right across uh, eastern Australia. The warnings have gone out. Vigilance has been called for, especially where stem rust susceptible cereal varieties are being grown. And growers have been advised to be prepared to spray at short notice. Fungicides work so much better as protectants than they do as trying to control infection that's already in the crop. So. Growers really need to be ready to spray the crops around flag leaf or soon after to control that very susceptible part of the upper stem and the head, um, the flag leaf from infection. So monitoring has got to be the key thing and trying to remember that protecting a crop is much better than trying to control the damage that's already occurring. It's also advisable to talk to chemical suppliers about their stock levels, according to Hugh Wallwork. The, the other issue we need to think about is that a lot of resellers don't have high stocks of fungicide on hand and if there were a sudden large outbreak of maybe one or two diseases then there may be an occasion sometimes when a grower can't access a fungicide so it is important to not just rely on, on their agent having fungicide ready when they want it if there's a strong demand from others elsewhere. Spraying will help to protect the current crop However, spraying alone won't reduce the stem rust population enough to totally remove the threat of it carrying over after harvest. Green bridge management is something farmers have to think about over the summer and into the early autumn. Uh, ideally, we'd like to see the green bridge removed from cropping areas uh, by the end of the March. And this is to stop that overlap from the volunteer cereals um, before the new crops are coming out of the ground in April. It is really important that when there has been rust out in the crops that those, those crops are well controlled as volunteers over the following summer. And while it's the regrowth of susceptible cereals that presents the greatest danger for future stem rust outbreaks, other grasses and weeds can still provide a green bridge. The others will enable it to survive from one season to the next and that's why we do see even after very dry summers rust carrying over and that's where some of these other grasses do play a role. 
If there was a season to reinforce the reason why the control of Greenbridge is so important, it's this season. This plant is a good example of uh, one heavily infected with stem rust. We can see the spores uh, up and down the stem and these will be um, getting dislodged and blown right across the whole district. Stem rust that has crossed over to this season's crop will have an impact on yields. Hopefully for most, not as bad as some have experienced in the past. Certainly back in 73, 74, there was very severe damage. I think across the state as a whole, there was 25% loss of yield in 1974. Um, but a lot of crops obviously were not affected so badly, so a lot of crops would have been well above 50%. This, this fungus gets in on the stem, cuts off the nutrients to the uh, grain, so you can get very severe amounts of grain shriveling and, and loss of yield. Stem rust remains one of the grain industry's most significant cereal pests, but a concerted effort from grain growers to eliminate Green Bridge will make a difference.